Hi, everyone. My name is Lori Black. I'm the Associate Director of the Lowell Milken Center for Music of American Jewish Experience here on the beautiful UCLA campus <laughs> um, uh, today in 8-Bit. Um, I'm very, very pleased uh, to welcome all of you to this workshop. One of the most fun things about my job is that not only do I get to work with incredible musicians, but I get to make those incredible musicians my friends. And I, I feel that way about this workshop. It was so wonderful just doing the sound check this morning and talking. Um, so Dan Blacksburg and Deborah Strauss are among two of, uh, I, I mean, just the finest uh, klezmer musicians and instructors in the United States today, uh, performing with a number of different ensembles, having uh, projects that span from uh, span from the traditional to to the to to the new and innovative. Um, they are both uh, in, just incredibly well versed in, in in what they do and I have had the opportunity to um, to learn from them on a number of occasions and wanting to uh, bring just some of that uh, incredible klezmer educational klezmer spirit to the to the west coast as best as we can here um, it, it's just such a pleasure for me uh, to invite Dan Blacksburg and Deborah Strauss to teach this workshop so thank you so much for being with us today Oh, we're so excited to be here. And yeah. um, if you are comfortable keeping your camera on, that would be awesome. I know for some people it's not, even after a year, sometimes you don't feel so comfortable with it. That's okay. Zok nish. Don't worry about it. But if you want to turn it on, that would be awesome. It makes us feel a little closer to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really nice. Um all right. Hey, Dan. Hey, Deb. <laughs> this is good. And we see lots of wonderful people who we've worked with in the past and a bunch of new faces also. And I think we wanted to start with a couple of questions. Um, if you are planning to attend both classes, uh, could you raise your hand? You could even put a, uh, you could click the raise hand in the reaction thing. And that's that's one way we can see. You either way, it's all good. Make sure you, when you raise your hand, you got a lower hand afterwards. This is really great. Great. So for some of you, it's a one-off. Maybe some of you will be able to come uh, at the last minute. Maybe you'll decide afterwards that you want to come again. Um, let's see. What else did we want to ask? Okay. Um, so uh, who here speaks or really feels comfortable in? you know, with, with the language, with either Yiddish or Hebrew words. Okay, I, I like this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, a third question is, who has spent a lot of time studying or playing klezmer that doesn't come from sort of the mid-century bombastic American tradition. <laughs> exactly. Like some of, for some of us, I mean, you know, for some of us, you know, it depends Jen, on your yes, instrument. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. And then finally, um, we were thinking a lot about, you know, this is growing out of our Klezmer How You Play It class, which uh, we've done together a number of times at Yiddish New York. Um, and we were thinking about what are the best tools to introduce some of these con concepts in a, in a concise and meaningful way. And we kept looping around to the same tune, which some of you I'm sure have worked on with one or the other of us. I know that, that, um, Hank Isnetsky likes to use this tune, um, so I am sure that some of you know, are familiar with, and play Asher Nosan Lanu. Lanu, Asher Nosan Lanu. Who knows that already? Who has worked with that piece a bit? Francis, I was sure had. Um, okay. I think we're good. So what I'm hoping then actually for Francis, for someone like Francis who's worked on it before, is that you'll get to a new level of depth with it, and also that you'll share some of your experiences. Although we're a very big group, 
um, we're going to hope that we'll be able to get some feedback from all of you. So really, Francis, feel like you can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand and give us some feedback about your experience with working on this piece. Um, yeah, and speaking of the chat, I think one of the things that we're aiming for today is that we do want to have like a really open question in the chat, but what we kind of want to avoid is having a really robust discussion in the chat while we're doing our sequence. There'll be certain, we're going to, we have a couple stopping points planned for when, um, for when we want to address questions and maybe even have open it up to a larger discussion. We'll see how that goes. But, uh, more, but importantly, I think, so feel free to ask questions in the chat, but we want to ask you to refrain unless it's like, uh, my video turned off what's going on, you know, uh, um, please refrain from responding to the questions in the chat. And we'll sort of, we have, we'll sort of have natural stopping points in our, our program where we'll take stock of those questions and try to, offer something and maybe even hear from some of you, but let's all, let's just keep that all in one place, you know? Cool. And the final question um, is for how many of you, for any of you, is this the first time you've taken a klezmer workshop? Some newbies. Ah, okay. A couple yes. of people have raised their hands. Fabulous. Welcome. Bruchim Boim, welcome. Shkoyach on, on reaching this moment. Um, that's awesome. We're really glad that you're here. Um, I'm super glad to be here with Dan. And um, let's dive in. So if you have grown up with either older family members who were Yiddish speakers, or you spent some time visiting um, older people who were Yiddish speakers, um, this voice, these words are going to feel familiar. And even if you didn't, there's something that's really tasty about them. And this is the singing and the playing and the speaking of Leon Schwartz. Leon Schwartz was a violinist. Um, he was born in the Bukovina region. He came to the U.S. in about 1927, and he's been a superb influence on many of us. Uh, he was a tremendous mensch. He was a wonderful person. He's as sweet. He was as sweet as he sounds. He learned throughout his life, which is extremely inspiring. And we have these wonderful recordings and videos where he's singing speaking and playing. And that's really what this is all about, is getting just dipped in a context. And all of these elements are gonna make you feel connected to the context, to the, the language and the environment that we want to impart to you as klezmer players. So we are gonna start by hearing the recording. Um, I'm sure some of you have heard it before. It is in the folder uh, on our, uh, and it's not a Dropbox, it's the Google Drive, so you will have this to take away with you. Um, I'm gonna share the screen and let's listen. Oops, wrong one. Okay, can everyone see my iTunes? Great. Okay, let's get right at the beginning. Here we go. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear this well. Ashen was alone, no Tora Semes, Ashen was alone, no Tora Semes, Ashen was alone, no this is the atmosphere I was brought up in. In the education with the Cheder. I remember the first day I went to Cheder because they carried me to Cheder. 
the Cheder, the very first thing that it, what they taught you is to be able to read the Cheder. And uh, never forget it with the way that Getzel Schwartz used to say, Labeler. He used to get up, yeah, Rabbi. Buchstabin, you had the word Buchstabin. Comets alafu, comets base bo, comets gimel go, then o bo go, segel alafa, segel base ba. Okay, I think that we'll stop there and wait for the instrumental part. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, uh, so any, uh, uh, let me throw out a few words right away. Is everyone clear what a cheder is? A cheder is, a, is the, 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 the school uh, for small boys uh, to learn the aleph base, to learn the alphabet, and to learn to read the siddur, to the, the prayer book. And what he's describing is that he was carried there because he was very small and that uh, they started out by learning how to recite the letters of the alphabet and they would do it in this sort of rote fashion and he's saying comets aleph aleph is the first letter and it makes the sound aw comets base makes the sound ball and they're going through in this rote fashion Ya ba 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 ba, ya ba ba ba, ya ba 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 ba, and that's what he grew up with. Um, any other words that were uh, that, that that you want to know what they were, or something that you didn't quite understand from that little bit that we played? You can always. Uh, I know that uh, Lori's going to monitor the chat. Okay, great. Um, Okay, so let's look at the words. Let's look at the words. Okay. So ye, some of you, those of you who have been called to the Torah for an aliyah, these words will feel familiar because they're part of the Torah blessings. Um, but here we're doing it in, in Ashkenazic pronunciation so that your stresses come in different places. Um, not your stress, but the... That always comes from the same place. Yes, exactly. Um, that that, that you're, you're feeling them on downbeats, and this is really, really significant. And if you can hop, if you can grab these little pearls and these little phrases, these will explain extend, expand into everything you do in playing klezmer music. They're going to teach you about where you start, where you arrive, what's important, what's less important, where to, to uh, direct your energy, where to add uh, a little ornamentation to give it some extra strength. All of this is contained in these few lines. Um, at least that's how Dan and I feel. So I'm going to say the words, and I can't see too many of you. That's the problem with uh, the screen share. But I'm going through the the uh, the strip that's to my right. So I'm really hoping that you're going to repeat afterwards. So here we go. Asher nosan lo nu. Toiras emes. Asher nosan lonu 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 toiras emes. Toiras emes. Toras emes. And you will notice that, that Leon is kind of saying toras or toras sometimes. That's like a, a range of possibilities. So for, for our purposes here, we're going to say toras. Okay. Asher no san lonu toras emes. The one who has given us no san lonu is us. Toras, the Torah of truth. This is perfect because we're coming up on shvuas. 
uh, the truth of the Torah of truth. So Torah is Torah is Torah, Torah, the the five books of Moses, um, and Emes is truth. Asher nosan lo nu toiras emes. Asher nosan lo nu toiras emes. Asher nosan lo nu toiras emes. Toiras emes. Okay, how's that feeling? Give me a thumbs up if that's feeling kind of nice already. And I'm going to ask a question, which is... Where do you think the line is going? What do you think is the goal of the line? Once you've gotten the asher, so you got an ahi on the downbeat, an asher, what's the goal that you're going to? What respond word goal are you going to? You may respond in the chat, and Lori can tell us who that is. I'm sure some of you know. Don't be shy. Do we have anyone? You can also unmute. Are they able to unmute? Yes. And you should be able to raise your hands as well. Um, I like the raise hand. It's all all, all of these options. We've got so many options. Um, I guess the other way, if people... Toiras. We have a few now in the um, in the chat that are saying Toiras. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Great. If you said Toiras, that's what we really feel. Asher nosan lo nu Toiras emes. And what you're going to see is that when you could try to transcribe, our ethnomusicologists here could try to transcribe what he's singing, and we do that sometimes. Uh, for me, it feels difficult to do that, and I like to do it with words and without trying to assign uh, lengths to those notes. Um, and when we write it out as a transcription, we kind of write it out a little sort of not descriptive, um, not even prescriptive, but just sort of neutral so that you can add what you want to it, to do to it. Um, but how do you know what to do? How do you know what to do? How do you know where the stresses go? How do you know where it's, it feels right to add a little bit of an ornament or a trill or a little, a little something extra? And this is a great way to give yourself some ideas about doing that. So right. again, let me read and then Dan will read back, read, Dan will read back. And then we're going to look at the second part and then we'll do it with the, the uh, singing. Here we go. Asher no san lo nu toiras emes. 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 Toiras emes. Toiras emes. And another thing to point out here too is how much Yiddish and Lushan Koidish, um, especially Yiddish, I, um, it aligns. So we're not singing Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet. We're singing Asher no San Lonu Toiras Emes. Toiras Emes, almost like it's one word. Mm -hmm. That's hugely important. It's not Toiras Emes, it's Okay, second part. Vichaye, uh, uh, life. Oilom is, uh, is eternity in this case. Vichaye oilom. Nota uh, has implanted in us. Bisoy chenu. Vichaye oilom. Nota bisoy chenu. Vichaye oilom. Nota bisoy chenu. Vichaye oilam nota besoichenu. Vichaye oilam nota besoichenu. Vichaye olam nota nota besoichenu. Vichaye oilam nota besoichenu. 
slightly and different. He did something <laughs> very, very special. Uh, uh, Leon did something very special, which I just love. These slight changes um, that I wouldn't normally have thought of. I just love to, to learn from someone like Leon. Vichaye oilom nota nota besoicheinu. He's like, he's elaborating on nota. And, right, and, and if you actually want to make that a little, one of the ways that I hear it for that line is which is also a thing that happens in traditional Ashkenazi cantorial music is that you you just kind of pulse the note a little bit word so if you want to try it and this will be useful for getting into the rhythm later you can say right yeah that's nice and that's you can nice. hear that in the recording for sure yeah that's really beautiful that's beautiful Okay, let's sing it with a melody. We are in D only because it's good for all of the instruments, uh, not because klezmer music is always in D. Wait, okay? really? No, it's not. <laughs> not. It's not. It's not. But it's a good. It's a good uh, meeting point, intersection point. Here we go. Asher no san lo nu Asher no san lo nu toiras emes. Asher no san lo nu toiras emes. Asher no san lo nu toiras emes. Asher no san lo nu. Let me start again and actually stay in the right tonal center. Yeah, this is good Jewish singing. Asher no san lo nu toiras emes. Asher no son 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 lo nu toiras emes. Toiras emes. Beautiful. How is that sitting with everybody so far? What if we uh, what if we did rather than a call and response this time, and I'm happy to do it also, but to sing all four stanzas together without the re without the response? Good, let's do it. Cool. All right, here we go. So Asher no son la nu toiras emes. Asher no son la nu toiras emes. Asher no son la nu toiras emes. Toiras emes. And we we have written down flat second. We want you to know and to really be aware. So we're in minor. We're in a minor mode, but we have this gorgeous thing where when we are going down back into the tonic, a lot, a lot, a lot of times that second degree is flattened. That's something many of you know already. Sometimes it's not flattened, and sometimes it's in between. And that's the gorgeous thing about it, and they can live together at the same time. So actually, let's do it again. I'm going to uh, not lower it, and I'll have Dan lower it, and you'll see how beautiful it, it gets all crunchy together. All right, you, you start that this time, and it'll be, uh, and it'll be, and that way we'll have, we'll just reverse the, uh, the zoom lag. Okay. <laughs> so some of the things that you're noticing too are notice where it's one word, notice where it's more than one word, and notice where the words elide. So you're not going to sing ah share. No san lo asher no san lo nu toiras emes. Okay. Yeah, and I hope everybody, you know, like I said, this is we're 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 it just because of the format here, you have to sort of overcome this and imagine that we're all in a room together where if we didn't hear you singing, we'd be like, "Come on, do some singing," you know. So uh, please do that as well. And we can actually see your mouths. It's true, so we can tell if you're not singing. <laughs> okay.
kidding. All right, really let's kidding. do this. You're let's do the right. second part. Are we ready to do the second part? Everyone no, feel we'll the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. confident to do the second part. Here we go. Vechaye oi lom nota besoichenu. Vechaye oi lom nota besoichenu. Vechaye oi lom nota besoichenu. Vechaye oi lom no ota nota besoichenu. Gorgeous. Thank Yay. you. Yay. Us. All right. Let's try it together. Let's try it the whole thing put together. You will have the recording. You will have the words. So we're going to keep moving forward. Um, what if we what if we just start on the second stanza for this time and then we'll do it from the top? Yeah. Yep. Here we go. Eight, two, three in Zoom. Vechaye yohoylam nota besoichenu. Vechaye yohoylam nota besoichenu. Vechaye yohoylam nota nota besoichenu. It's kind of cool having it be like this, this, this synagogue, ancient shul mush that is Zoom. Um, as long as we don't slow down to try to match the other person. That's right. Okay, I would like to ask before uh, we move on to the instrumental portion of, of working on this piece, um, could I ask you all to stand up? Okay, at some point we may work, so I practiced putting my computer on the floor so you can see my feet and hopefully not the mess that is my office uh, with papers and Yiddish and masks and all sorts of things everywhere. So what we want you to do, which if you've worked with us before you know, is lean forward on the downbeat, probably with your left foot. So it's Asher no San Lonu. So you're leaning in on the downbeat. And the other thing that's sort of cool is, we'll be talking about this more later today and on Thursday also, is within that strong pulse, you also have your back foot giving a slightly less uh, prominent beat. And you also have a little bit of a beat, a pulse, with your knees. So you have a few different levels of rhythm going on, even already and even in your body. And and if you want to get, fa if you want to, if you're feeling like I'm a musician, I need to think musically, you can just think we're in, it's two beats, whether you call it two, four, 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 I don't care. You got a strong beat and you got a less strong beat. And then your knees and your shoulders are kind of the off beats. So not literally, and it's not metronomic. It's not about being metronomically correct, but it's just that those are the parts, right? So, you know, you have your and and if you're if you're confused, I was thinking I was like, oh, southpaw stance. If you're into that kind of thing, so you know, it's like uh, you know, one and two and one and two and right. So if you feel like you need to deal with it that way, but I, if you can, if you can, just let go of the numbers and just think of the back and forth. So this works really well, I think, f for Dan and me both. This way of, pardon the expression, embodying the rhythm uh, works really well. If it's not, give it a try. You may find ways that work better for you. Um, but it's really, um, I don't know, it makes you feel like you're, you're sitting in it in a really nice way. Here we go. And and use your own uh, singing t t with your beats because we're not going to be particularly well lined up. Ain't say that I fear. Asha no san lo nu toi ra semes. Asha no san lo nu toi ra semes. Asha no san lo nu toi ra semes. Toy dance, 
since we're going on. Yeah, let's do it again, but this time I'm going to... Dan, why don't you be the 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 leader person? You got it. All right, I'm not even so... Gonna, I'm going to mute myself, actually. Oh, okay. So, okay, let's just get, like... I actually don't like snapping to this because that's not really that useful. Uh, hopefully people can hear me, but it's like... I'm getting my... I'm just pretending I'm holding on to someone's hand in a circle, right? Anyway, here we go. Men say dry fear. Hasha nasan la nu toy ras emes. Hasha nasan la nu toy ras emes. Hasha nasan la nu toy ras emes. Toy ras emes. Vichaye oilam nota bisoichenu. Vichaye oilam nota bisoichenu. Vichaye oilam nota nota bisoichenu. So there you go. That is a good sense. Remember here, like what we're talking about, hold on. What we're talking about really is the the biggest the sort of like simplest parts. We were, we were talking about this when we were planning for this class, and we were like, well, what are we, when we get klezmer, how you play it, like what are we talking about? We're not saying, here's the rhythm used for this tune, here's the rhythm used for this tune, here's the rhythm that goes with this dance. It's like, what is the sort of sonic and movement cultural context? I, I said, like, what would you know if you grew up in this context, you know, with in a Yiddish-speaking context or in a context where this music was regular. And you you would have a little bit, often you'd have a little bit of these kinds of things. You'd have a sense of this back and forth. You'd have a sense of, uh, you know, the melodies being front-loaded, right? Because we're not going, you know, uh, you know, the, yeah, that thinking about if anybody grew up in sort of a, like I did in a, in a sort of traditional American synagogue in the second half of the 20th century, you know, you know, it's like, that's this, that's this. But it's like, all of that is, it's asher natan lanu torat emet, right? So all the emphases are on the end of the words, end of the words. And then if you do the, the Eastern European Ashkenazi pronunciations, asher nasan lanu Toiras emes. So everything's on the front of it. And I think that that is super useful for the way that the music that then and the musical stylings, the musical approach that you approach all these klezmer dance tunes, all these klezmer, all these uh, Ashkenazi folk melodies or you know, religious melodies or anything. This is this is the kind of some this is some of the some of the stuff that you'd kind of, you might have just in your ears. This would be your sort of basic approach. Um, let's see. I think, does anybody, do we have any questions currently? And uh, Rochelle Sterling, you had your hand up. Was that just left over or was that, or do you I think that was a leftover hand up? Okay, great. So appreciate I think we've that. all done that. <laughs> we all have done that. Or we, don't raise your hands to begin with. So I appreciate that too. Um, does anybody have any questions about what they've heard so far? And if not, I think we're going to go into trying to play it on our instruments a little bit. Okay. And what I would add about the movement, moving to your instrument mm -hmm. is you're really, for this purpose, you are playing the words on your instrument. It doesn't mean you're always going to do it like this. We turn things into instrumental versions, but if you have this as your scaffolding, you're going to have a much better idea how to move into a more instrumental version because some of the elements stay the same in how we think of this music and how this music um, uh, speaks. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So always feel like you can go back to singing. Always feel like you can go back to movement. Um, and don't be afraid to do things like 
just play the downbeat and just play the last tone and sing the middle or just listen for the middle. Be creative in how you approach learning this um, with the most important part being uh, that you feel the words are in your breath or your bow or your fingers. Absolutely. And to build on that, I think when we when we go to play our instruments and we're and we're not sort of uh, steeped, you know, we when you we re, it's very easy to revert to what's easiest, what's most automatic, what's most common in your playing, right? So what you can, what I always offer is the idea that you can really um, it, it's almost like save as, you know, it's like you really have to save as the experience of singing and moving like we just did and then copy and paste that onto playing your instrument. Because if you just say, cool, we did this thing over here. Let me open up my instrument file. It's not going to contain any of those, <laughs> that, those, uh, that detail. This is the kind of things, metaphors you come up with when you're on the computer all the time. So, but, so it really is, it's like, take this stuff with you, copy and paste it on top of your playing. And what that means, usually it means you have to take things a little slower. So um, what I want to do actually is I think I'm going to play through it once and then we'll break it down. So my hope is that you can hear the words in, uh, in my own playing. We'll see. I'll get, I'll take a grade. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> So I think that is obvious. Obviously, I have a slide that really helps getting a little more wordy or vocal. But uh, actually, I see a lot of people do too. Don't get it's not about the slides. I can do the same thing without them. So I'm going to show it to you without them. So uh, let's just get the fa the fastest way to learn this is just to get into just get uh, the sense get grounded in the the big notes of each section. So the first section is really based around the, you know, just your, your big basic minor triad of the key. We're in the concert D minor. And so you have the D, the F and the A, and then the note G, the fourth degree of the scale. And if you just, if you hear, try to hear other notes around those notes. So, so we're here, let's just play concert D, right? And a concert F. And we're going to play a concert G right now. And follow that up with an A. And let's walk down from A down to D in the scale. A, G, F, E, D. Right? Um, now... We can we can say Torah Mass, right? Let's do that same thing. I don't, you know, that was a very interesting second to last note. Um, so one of the things I want to offer is that, like Deb said, this is very elided music, meaning play legato. <laughs> You know, start legato. You can have some strong attacks on it, but I would say they need to be, they need to be, uh, you don't want them to be too sharp. So if I go, I mean, it's just, I can't even, I can't even picture it. So anyway, when, when you join your uh, Abe Schwartz style brass orchestra and you're a brass player, you can start articulating like that again but you'll do other things to make up for it. Okay. Anyway, so remember, da, ba, ba, ba. Those are their kind of, so 
Asher Nasan Lanu Torah MS, right? So, uh, we like to start on. That's one way to do it. You don't even really need to worry about what that what the pitch of that beginning note is, because Leon doesn't when he's singing. Let's just repeat that three more times. Next is... So we're lucky in that we don't have to change the rhythm because the words are the same. Um, and it's moving up to that da, 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 right? We're still focusing around. If you can remember what we said about the, sca the, the, the pitch scaffolding, right? Concert D, concert F, concert G, concert A, back down to D. So... So that's the second phrase. Let's loop the first phrase and the second phrase. One more time. Cool. Excuse me. So, third phrase. Ya da 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 da. Asher no son la nu toras ms. Right? Woo! What a payoff. Or really, what a build up, right? All right. Now, this one spreads out a little more note wise. Of course, it does. It's the third thing, it's the payoff, right? Um, so I think that we want to think da 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 uh, da da So this is like we're surrounding those notes that I suggested at the beginning, the at the D, the F, the at the G and the A, right? So even though the, the highest note of the melody is a B flat, it's right? So it's it's really about and and this is the same kind of thing. The music is has has this same kind of like there's sort of scaffolding on top of it um, that it's built on, it's, and it's not very complicated scaffolding. But what's good about it is if you kind of keep a sense of the scaffolding, just like keeping a sense of the words and the way you pronounce the words, tells you where to put where. You know, it's like, it's like this is the ingredients, the recipe. This is the directions of the recipe. And you figure out where you can add your own touches. Anyway, let's try the, so we're trying the first. We actually know the cadence already. Da, 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 da. So we started with that. So I'll play it one time. So, um, no, quick quick vocal recap. Asher nasan la nu toiras MS. Asher nasan la nu toiras MS. Asher nasan la nu toiras MS. Toiras MS. Right? So, if you can draw, I, I love to, I learned klezmer music from people who love to draw the melodies either using their hands like this or actually just physically drawing it, and I play the trombone, so I'm very uh, amenable to such spatial representations. So um, I hope that you also, and this is a great way when you're not trying to get too stuck into a key, is to just take it as a shape that you kind of stuck onto the key that you're playing it in. That's how you transpose anyway, right? Okay. Here we go. Full, full A section. Ready?
Now, dynamics are really nice, too. You listen to Leon sing it. You hear he goes, he's like, I'll share not so long in the toy, I'll share not so long in the toy, SMS, I'll share not so long in the toy, SMS. Right? And he just even waits there. Toy, SMS. And so that's another quality of this music that I always like to emphasize is that tempo is really about, it, like, the melody drives the tempo. This is not something where there's like an underlying groove underneath. And we'll get more to that, speak more to that when we get to the parts when we, um, when we talk about the the actual thing, Deb, hit two it. Li- just two little things to add. Um, that uh, there is always a pulse, though, and the pulse will change. The pulse might be slower or faster, but it's not like there isn't this sort of feeling always of some. Even if he stops, you're still feeling. Well, if you think it. Right. If you think of forward and back like we did on our feet, you can pause, you can suspend forward or you can suspend back, but there's still a, there's still a conversation happening there. All right. Let's try playing it, the A section, two more times. We'll move on to the B section, which is a few more notes. Uh, and if this pace is too slow, tell me when we're finished these two times. Ready? Uh. <laughs> general is that pace okay for people good 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 yes good two screens worth of you say thumbs up second section so there is a pulse you can really hear where the beats are when you're learning stuff by ear, please try to zoom out as much as you can so you can realize that the first and second phrases are exactly the same and you'd only have to learn it once. Hey, nata is the same notes as Torah MS, right? Whew. Thank goodness. Less to work on. You know, so if I was, if I was, I, you know, in this section, and this is true of a lot of klezmer tunes, you only really have to learn one v'chaye o'elam nata b'schenu, and then you have to learn that really long one. The rest you can kind of copy and paste. And, you know, as you know with any uh, computer document, the more you can copy and paste, the better your life is. So, let's try. So, that starts back. We're back on again, and it's really useful if you can kind of stay grounded. Da, da. Now we're adding a new note. Da, right? This is we've added a new note into our scaffolding, and that's development. That's how you make a good tune, right? So, da, 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 and that new note is right below the root. So in this case, it's a concert C. So let's try, I'll, I'll repeat it f- several times. Now, it says, but if you didn't want to, you don't really have to re-articulate that note. You just got to give it some oomph. One more time. Now, one of the cool things about Yiddish music is that it's a big pulse and it's not about equal, it's not about hitting a bunch of equal subdivisions on some 
abstract tempo that's not being heard. Everything you hear, it's very literal. It's like what you hear is what you get. Um, and so, Oilam, you could say, Oilam, Nata And that sounds very nice. Still strong on the beats. The subdivisions are very, very equal, right? So let's try playing it very da 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 da. Now, what's important is that it's da 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 da. Right? If you listen to him sing, you'll hear that immediately. It does not have. It, it's it's anyway. Whatever you get it. So let's try that. Ready? Uh uh. <laughs> What can also happen is, and you hear him do this as well, is that there's no reason you to keep them equal. But if you're going to do one thing to them, you got to make you push it closer to the front of the beat. This is not laid back music. So you could say vichaye oilam nata besoichenu, right? So how do you play that? Da 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 da. So everything's a little bit front ended. So try try. It'll be like. Da 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 This is the style. This is a little too stylized. I just want to say that right out there, but I want you to try it. So it sounds like this. Ready? That's unrealistic, but it's a little. But it's the idea. So you can combine those two and make a nice little phrase. And what's great about that is you don't want to play each line the same way twice because why would you repeat it if you didn't want to make some variation on it? And um, so, yeah, make some variation. Great. Cool? Let's get to that next part. Don't worry about it. It's just going it's going up an octave and just walking back down the scale and then walking back up to get to the thing. So the cadence. Whew, not so bad actually. I always find that this part feels very uh different and after everything else that's happened is the thing. Um, that's v'chaye olam, right? So if you go da 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 da, that's for the Lutherans. Do it for the Jews. Da 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 da. So ba 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 ba. Little Paco Bell's Canon vibe. One more time. And together. Right? One more time. And that will loop that a couple times because that's that's the sort of crux of the thing. Okay, and then not a which you know already. So da 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 right? Almost there. We get this, we got the whole thing. Cool. You're doing great. Love it. One Two from Vichaye. Uh. Again. Okay. 
okay. Yes. Okay. Somewhere we'll do it again. We'll, we'll repeat it. So, uh, I want us just like we did with the vocals, we're going to start on this second verse. And if you can't literally hear the note, the words in your head, mm, just try to keep, remember it's about copying and pasting. We're not perfect at that. Like our computers are. So you just get as much as you can. And then you keep doing, if you're still singing, that's fantastic. If you want to rock, rock back and forth a little bit, also fantastic. So, um, let us get into this. So we're going to go second section, first, second, second section, and then we'll see where we are. All right. It's really fun to play. It's really fun to play, and it actually, if you don't mind my adding a couple things right now. Yes. Um, is this a good time to add a couple of things? Yes. And then let's let's pretend this is a question and answer period, and then this is you just asked the question and answered it yourself. Okay. So anybody else who has questions, I know we had one question that we didn't quite get into, which I will address uh but let's let anybody else who has questions currently about how to tran either how to any of this stuff, but specifically on your instrument. Um, so you're Deborah's going to answer her own question first, and then we'll try to answer your questions. Okay. I think that there are a few things. The reason that I sort of went, oh my gosh, this is a fantastic melody and a fantastic sort of example and teaching melody is because it does some things that really are often, often, often part of the style. This sort of movement between the note D and the note C below it is this rocking between D and C. You see it often when you're playing in Fragish. Um, but even here, this sort of movement between the D and C is very emblematic. And then what happens? The C is displaced an octave. And that's really also very, very common. Um, it's common in, in chazonis, it's common in cantorial music um, as well. This feeling that you're here. And where's the next ecstatic place to go? Yeah, yeah. Displacing the octave, coming back down. And the other, again, at the cadence, you don't have to just go. There are some things you can do, like how you start to extend this, and we don't want to go too far with this right now, but where you can loop around the D, and you're looping around the D in a way that's going to bring you back to D. So you might want to do...
So those are just a couple of things that um, sort of cry out as, as little emblems. So we have a few different things. We have the displacement of the octave. We have moving between the tone one and the tone seven. We also have things that are going in a line of Asher no son lanu toira semis. Asher no son lanu toira semis. Asher no son lanu toira semis toira semis. I say something. I raise up a little bit. I raise up a little bit more and I comment on it a little bit more. That's also extremely um, emblematic, extremely common. One other thing that I will add is when you start to think about adding more rhythm or depth or, or taste to it, a lot of times what I will want to do as a fiddler is when I get to a place like Toiris, I want to emphasize it. And a way to emphasize it, what's a good way to emphasize a note? or a, a space, a place? What kind of technique could you use to emphasize that? Yeah, articulations, dynamics, and, uh, and for us, ornamentation. Trills, trill. I, 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 I'm not very fond of the word ornamentation. Um, I think they sort of grow out of their little things that grow out of the melody, and I just want to go... that little bit of movement forward and also colors the note a little bit. So those are a couple of things that I was uh, just forced For to brass, add right at that moment. For brass, a moment like that, you know, you can do a trill, but I think like if you play a trumpet, you know, a valve trill is much harsher, is much more discreet tones than what Deb just did. I obviously don't have that as an option. So what I do is I just do a wide slide vibrato and I find that it creates the same thing. And then that sort of shows me that it's actually about, it's about the pushing into that note. Ah, uh, and then whatever happens when you push into that note, um, you know, could be that the note goes, ah, uh, or that the note goes, Ah, uh, or that goes ah, uh, right? And it's it's about like the action, which makes sense because if you were thinking about your forward and back from our movement, ms, right? Da 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 da. It really lines up that way. So I had to stare at myself to make sure I was doing it the same way. Um, yes. And since we're all muted, like I see someone giving that a shot right now, other people can feel for you to just give that a shot. Even if you just go da 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 da, that's still getting the same thing, right? If if the technical part of the trill or whatever, or if you have a busted trombone and you can't move your slide that fast, it's like you know you get the same idea. This is why this music is. And the, the depth of this music and what we're trying to put, present here is that the, uh, the emotional impact of the music is actually accessible on all levels of instrumental technique, right? Okay, so we have things uh, says, what about adding grace notes as you go down the scale? That's a good question. The question is, are those grace notes uh, supporting the lyrics in this case? And if we didn't have lyrics, would be sort of like the lyrical version of the melody. Um, so, you know... Da, 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 da. So you could go da, 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 da. Um, you could go, if you, but for example, if you go, piada, 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 ba, that's not, you can't really pull Toyrus Emmas out of that. Toyrus, you can't do it, right? So, so you have to, so it's about sort of getting, this is great because it has the lyrics that tell you what the like the, the lyrical version, the lyrical scaffolding is, right? The lyrical distillation of the melody is. If you want to, um, you know, and 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 some of this stuff does get lost over time, even in sort of like the old recordings, right? So not that there's a version of this that goes like this, but there could you could imagine if there was like. <laughs> And it's just it, 
cool. It's a dance tune. It's gotten flattened out a little bit, but they'd know it, right? So it would sort of be back in the background. You can still pull that off, actually, if you have some of this in the background. It's just not as overt. So we're going for the really overt version. Um, I see another t question that's directed at me. It just says, end timing. And I'm a little confused what that means. But uh, so, uh, Maureen, if you were wanted to unmute yourself and just ask the question really quick. Oh, t timing to emphasize a note. Uh, actually, could you be more just what which where the are you asking how to emphasize a note with your timing hold the i'm so sorry you're saying a lot of things and it's great unfortunately um i said hold the note longer i'm still not exactly sure what to answer for you why not I'm so unmute sorry. In a... if you don't mind no i was just re just trying to respond to your question of a while ago that you've been elaborating on about how to emphasize like if you want to emphasize a particular word or note you know you talked about different ways of emphasizing it so I was just adding that holding it a little longer could be a way sure um and I I actually think that that's a great thank you and I think that's a great segue actually to just listening to the whole track again now that we've learned it and listening to him play it on his violin as well. So, uh, Deb, I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab us away to do that. Is that cool? What do you mean? <laughs> Just this. Um, you cannot share computer sound. Okay. Uh, if you want to just stop participating. Oh, I can do it. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just gonna. We'll just do it this way real fast. Boom. Boom. Um, all right, so let's just listen to all this again. And I think you'll be able to hear it in a second. Yep, there it is. Sorry, it's very quiet. Okay. <laughs> We'll just skip ahead. This is the atmosphere I was brought up in. Uh, when I learned about this tune from Hank Isnetsky, he liked to say, even in the when he says the English, it's still on the front. This is the atmosphere I was brought up in, right? Anyway. Asher, the very first thing that they, that they taught you, Buchstabir. You had the word Buchstabir. Go, then, oh, bo, go. Say Listen to him play it on the violin. In G. <laughs> there it is. So 
we uh, we we were talking about the the difference between that flat second or the not flat second, and he he loves the flat second when he's moving, but when he gets to the dramatic ending, it's just an A natural. It's just a nice little five chord there. Da, 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 da. You know, so funny how that works. And I think that 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 just to say that it's more of a rather than getting hung up on whether like what's theoretically correct, like if it was in a major key or a minor key, it's more just about the emotional quality of it. Um, you know, there are this the, this kind of shifting of accidentals or whatever does come have roots in middle in the middle in Middle Eastern musical systems that um, that have uh that do have strict rules for how this stuff works, but uh, klezmer is J- Yiddish music happens in a middle place between cultures and does not have does not run by those kinds of strict rules, even though it's informed by them. Um, cool. Uh, time for questions, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions? You're welcome to unmute. Um, I've got a question. Um, one of the really interesting topics that we've talked about today is this idea that like kind of playing the words, you know, you, that they, they were taking the text and we're trying to transfer it to our instruments. And I know that we also play a lot of instrumental music that didn't necessarily have words at some point. And I, I'd be interested to hear if you can elaborate just a little bit on, well, how can we use this, some of the same ideas to influence that more instrumentally oriented music? Well, Lori, it's so great you asked that question and because we are going to segue soon, but not exactly right now, into a non-word piece, into an instrumental piece that we'll use as our second example, which we're probably going to really spend more time on next in next class that then actually has words slapped onto it. So it goes in the opposite direction, but then you can kind of see like, eh, it was really ripe for words anyway. So, you know, uh, one of the things that happens in this piece is um, when he goes to his instrument, he st- he doesn't go Asher Nasan Lan. He goes bum ba 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 ba. I'm like, stop messing with our point, man. But really, it's like that's fine. These things can have lives of lives of their own. But he's he's not messing with the point because actually, the if we were we were talking about that before about the fact that it's. If the goal is Torah, <laughs> is Torah, yeah. even if he goes yum ya da 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 da, da he still got the sense of the goal. And I think one of the big things for us, as we're getting our feet in, and and even after years and years of studying this, is is really figuring out in each melody where you're going. So where are you starting, and where are you ending up? And then how you get there has a variety of ways to get there. It can be simpler, it could be more elaborate, it could be fancy, it could be very straightforward. And, but those, those points of beginning and destination are in the instrumental music as well. And frankly, they're also in the, the non-metered music, very much so. Um, when I was particularly stumped by Doina, um, years ago, it, my aha moment was simply, you're just starting here and you're trying to get there. And how are you going to get there? And then from there, you're just trying to get here and then you're coming back home. And once I was able to sort of make this shape, um, what goes on in between um, just helps you get there in a variety of ways. And I, I think that's one of the ways that it, it um, you can apply some of the same the same uh, uh, ideas, the same, the same, uh, yeah, the, the the same basics, the same basics. I also think it's super useful. Um, it's kind of like a mission of ours to find um, the the tunes that cross over between, you know, are they sung, are they played, you know, and that's super fun just to find as many as possible. And I think you'll find some of these these. Um, rules these 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 ideas that get carried across uh instrumental and vocal yes um let's see do we have any uh francis says on a string instrument you can bend the note i have it both ways i'm assuming that's going for the second or the flat second right yeah 
So on trombone, it's also, it's like, I, I'm just going. So if, I mean, if I was a classical player, I'd probably be like, I have to, I'm only allowed to go to from here to here, but I'm not. So it's like, is E, you know, the second degree can be anywhere in a range spectrum of, of spots. Um, but if you don't have, if you play a keyboard instrument, you can, you know, like Thelonious Monk used to play like ha a lot of half steps to Im imitate bluesy notes. You can actually go da, 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 or, but if you go da, da, it's like, it gives it a little more of a breadth. So instead of like plunk, 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 you know, and, and really it's like, it's the legato, the leg if, when in doubt legato, because Yiddish is when in doubt is a very elided language, you know, and uh, all that stuff. Um, and right, so like this tune, da -ba -da -da -ba -da -ba -da 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 -da, from the instrumental version is almost exactly the same as the beginning of another hustle. Da da ba 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 What's what's um, true in one situation is going to be true in the other situation, especially when the tempos are this are are so similar. Um, the little add-on to the legato thing is though, like speaking as a string player, is if you tell string players to play, that's where we go is to be legato, uh -huh. and it's actually it actually doesn't work. You have to think of it in a somewhat different way. Um, because otherwise you're going to go, yeah, meow, wah, 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 wah. And that's uh, not so what we want. this is an want. instrument family so, problem. So that's, yeah, that's why you actually really, you, you actually need to feel articulated yet connected. And that's Great. why the words help so much. So, so, it has to be articulated, but still like a phrase over it. Right. So, the, so for string players, it sounds like your tendency is so legato, you have to add the articulation. And for brass yes. players, it's the opposite. So that's why, so there we go. That's why it's good that we teach this class together. Uh, someone had their hand raised. Cool. Uh, what do you think, Deb? Should we do a little rhythm section biz? Sure. Just, and then wrap it up? Sure. Um, do you want to introduce the other tune just starting on Thursday? Yeah. Okay. I don't think there's, I mean, we could play it at the end, but I don't think there's any, there's not enough time to really teach it anyway. Yeah, we've only got a little bit of time left. So, tell, tell us again, who's coming back on Thursday? Who knows now you're coming back on Thursday? And if you weren't before. Yeah, you better do it now. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. It's wonderful to be with there'll all be of a you. Lot of, there'll be a lot of people. It, and, you know, it, it, there'll be a good entry point. It'll just be a lot easier for you to grab onto what we're talking about on Thursday than for the people who didn't get to do this one. Um, also, what's really nice about this, uh, the Asher Nasalano is that you can, it's got, you can actually put a lot of different kinds of chord changes to it, as long as it kind of, because there's so much stepwise motion, it's very nice. It can, it can handle very few chords, or it actually can handle quite a few chords. Um, and that, and that, I found that to be, make it even more fun. Um, okay, cool. So, I see some. I see. I see some keyboard instruments. I see some accordions. I see some, you know, uh, strumming instruments. What? How do you play? How do you play? Some accompaniment to this. Well, the thing about klezmer accompaniment in general is that it's actually it's not only supporting the melody. It's playing the melody with your accompaniment. These are not in. It's which is like, it's more like playing in a string quartet that plays Haydn than it is in like an Afrobeat band, right? So it's, so the easiest thing, just what are the fundamental things of what we got? Well, we've got our back, we've got our fourth and our back, right? So, and then remember when we moved, there were three components to that. So if you wanna do it again, just to step up, you have, you have, forward and a little bounce in the knee back right so dun 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 does this make sense a little bit so uh i take this stuff i actually just steal those patterns from deb because this kind of you don't hear brass so strongly in this thing uh so so if you're gonna play if you're gonna play a keyboard instrument and you want to go you know, bum, ba, 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 cool, but don't, 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 don't. No, it's, it's young, da, 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 da. If you play piano, this is, or accordion, 
It's a good start. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Right? And if somehow you came in with the idea that you should be playing off beats, um, I think that this will disavow you of that idea. It's not about going da, da, da. That's just not going to help you support a, a melody that moves forward. Yeah, certainly not on your own, right? Not on, yeah. If If you're in a band, and even if you are in, let's say you're in a larger ensemble, and you decide to play upbeats, those upbeats have to lead into the downbeat. So I, I think of it as like playing two layers when I go... Dum, bum, bum, ba, dum, bum, bum, bum. But you can you could like hock it that right. You could like split that up between separate people. But you'd have to articulate and phrase your length and use the length of your notes in a way where it feels like one one connected thing. So don't say like, oh, I'll never play off beats again. Just don't go bop, 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 bop. That's ska, right? Like or something. You know, it, it's. It, it, but the more you listen to this stuff, the more you realize that length, the length of your notes and the way that your the envelope in the note is so is like half of the battle. So, Deb, actually, could you hit us with like a nice riff, uh, secund riff that we could we could imitate? Okay. The other thing, I can't remember if we said this uh, in the last bit of time or not. What's important is you have, although we all we love to play together and it's all about the tangle that's made among instruments, you have to really feel and think and sing and play everything at the same time. And then if you pull it apart and play different parts, you have a sense of how the whole works. But you can't just learn one element and play that because it won't fit into what's going on. So you sort of want to be a little nutsy about this and think all the different layers at the same time. That's why the movement helps a lot. So you've got strong, you've got back, you've got pulse, and you've got the singing that's moving forward and the singing that's also sitting back and then moving forward, all happening in your body and your mind and your instrument at the same time. So that's sort of your, your go-to place is to feel like you're doing the whole thing and then you can listen to each other and pull it apart. So a good basic Secund part for fiddle, but I think everyone should learn every instrument's possibilities Would really just to be doing But I don't want to get into it just being a riff I want, No, of course not I want already to think even with something very simple to go so it's a lot about how I'm approaching the strong and then the moving notes. It's strong and then they're moving. But keep the words in your head. Okay, where do you want to go with that, Dan? Uh, let's all try it. So there's enough, there's enough string instruments here that we can try it. So uh, if you have... If you're a single note, if you're a string instrument, you can just imitate what Deb's doing. If you're a single note instrument, you're going to play the strong beats, the forward beats on the root, bum, 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 and then the off beats on the third, okay? So if we're in the D minor chord, the one chord, it'll be F. If you're on the G minor chord, it'll be B flat, and if you're on the A chord, it'll be C sharp, right? And, and depending on your where you're at with learning by ear, because I know... A bunch of people here who um, are new to learning by ear you could also stay on the tonic it's more important to think about the phrasing and the breath breath and the length than changing notes so you could be if you're a concert instrument you can be on D if you're a B flat instrument you could just stay on your E so you can just do so you're getting the feeling and not worrying about changing notes if that's if that's a little too much to think about all at once. Yes, and even singing it is also good. Cool. All right, Deb, I'll let you lead this. Okay, here we go. And I am going to sing at the same time. I don't do it too well, but it's really important to give it a try. Here we go. <laughs> 
Stay on the same chord for now. And one thing that I changed is right at the cadence when I went toidas ms instead of going toidas ms, I changed it up. Toidas ms. Even though I elided it and had a, a phrase mark over it, I made it the, the accompaniment a little broken so that it, it helped signify, oh, I'm about to end. Okay, let's do it now with the chord change. So we're going to go to G minor. So we're going to do... G minor. Notice that when you're going into a chord change, it's probably true on trombone and other instruments too, we tend to push into the chord change. You're You've got this sort of sense of, of urgency moving into the chord change and then settling back. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, so here is an, a different approach uh, that, I he that is taken from the way I hear trombonists play on the, a similar type of tune. Uh, and it's very similar, but it's instead of focusing on the root in the third, we'll add the fifth. So instead of going, we're very used to going dum, bum, 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 right? But we're not so used to going dun, 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 which is nice. So I can't sing at the same time. I mean, maybe I can. We'll see. <laughs> forget the last part that was a little cute um so yeah it's very different when you have a single note instrument but the point is the same you have the f you have the push you have the forward you have the back and then you're trying to make a little bit of a phrase a little bit of like a part out of it you're trying to make something that sounds good on its own let's turn that into something that's actually repeatable wait that's hugely important don't forget that he's trying to make something that sounds good on its own that's yeah. a really important thing so that has a little bit of what we do as a single note players you play a little bit of the melody you play a little bit of like a sort of like repeating pattern. You play a little bit of har like voice leading harmony. So I'll see if I can do the same thing again. But it's it uh, and just watch where I go. Ba 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 ba. So I just switched up, switched up the order of the arpeggio in order to emphasize the next note. I mean, that's learning how to do this on a single note line. You can learn it from any style of music. You know, you could transcribe a bunch of jazz bass lines and learn how to do in terms, in terms of knowing how to vary up the notes. And then you just, you need that feel. So, hum, dun, 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 bum, 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 bum. And you hear how it's like, put a little hairpin crescendo on that because we're, we're changing chords. So, now, right? So I just grabbed the cadence of the melody because I couldn't think of anything better to do, and that's totally cool. Because we're always like an octave or two octaves lower than the melody. Now, um, 
Yeah. For, you know, for instruments that can play more than one note, you don't need to, you don't need to zigzag around as much. And like, that's nice. So, um, Cool. Just to give you an example of what happens when you want to get a little fancier with it, but try to keep the same thing. So, mm, 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 mm. so I would probably, so right now we're trying to like, I was doing it sort of like two bars the same and then like making big chunks. And if I was probably playing with a group, I would be more dynamic and making more changes more rapidly. Like, so, but it's always sort of answer question answer phrase. So instead of going yum bum 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 that's you hear the question answer question answer. I would probably do the questions and answers faster. Something like. You know, all I did was I doubled up the question and answer of what I was doing. So instead of going having two bars of question, it was like bum 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 bum. So it's still it's still like two and two or four and four, but now I kind of like did one and one as well. And that's honestly how I practice this stuff. Yeah. And I mean, we're actually out of time, but um, notice too, because a lot of times, and I've had these discussions with, with a bunch of you, when you start to add, um, you sometimes make little tails that go off into nowhere. And what <laughs> we always have to do is it has to arrive somewhere. So if we're doing a... not so good <laughs> it always is looping back in where to the next down the beat that you want to be in and that's super super important yeah yeah the end is the beginning of the next thing not exactly. before it okay so that's that's a that's a little that's 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 our starting place that was fantastic thank you both so much for this wonderful workshop uh for those of on the for those of us on the West Coast, this is a wonderful way to start our day. For those of you on the East Coast, what a wonderful way to spend the afternoon. So I just want to offer a real big thank you to, to Dan and Deb for this wonderful workshop. Um, this was made possible by the Lowell Milken Center for Music of American Jewish Experience at the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music, with additional support from our dear friend Fran Feynman and the David Victor Foundation, who supports our, our Klezmer and Yiddish programming. Um, if you enjoyed what you heard today and you enjoyed what you got to learn today, please do join us on Thursday as well, uh, Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. In the chat, you will also see Dan has dropped the folder that has the sheet music for, for those of you that uh want to practice uh this wonderful tune um so with that uh just a thank you and enjoy the rest of your of your uh weekend everyone thank yes, you everyone absolutely. huge pleasure yeah till soon